for the North West Scotland. I, and I thought the marine environment and the um, environment in general for us, as long as I remember. So really, I started campaigning, and this is sort of chronological order of all the campaigning I've done, as well as, it, the, it's actually called the good, the bad, and the future of campaigning, or at least of my campaigning. So let's get started. So really, the first campaign I did was a community slash school-led campaign to try and get rid of plastic straws in Elbow. So it, we called it um, Nation Tour as we were going with um, some people from Glasgow. So it, it's a long-term plastic pollution impact, really. I mean, as the image has shown, I mean, it's getting everywhere. Turtles' noses, in lion poo, even. So it's, it's really a hard situation. So when I did this, I was about <coughs> my, uh, 10 or 9-ish. So that was something. And then that campaign really made me think about how I do everything in general. So um, the campaign has grown. I mean, the Sunday Mail straw campaign really came from this that we did. We did actually succeed in making up the first plastic straw-free village we believe in Europe so far. So. I mean, there's so much stuff in this plastic pollution. I mean, each thing is a little I mean, we all know what that's about. We just pick up the stuff, try and get it off the beach as much as possible. For the drain campaign, that was um, run by the same people in Glasgow that we let out the store campaign, which is simply to advertise that 80% of all the stuff in the ocean actually comes from land. And it's the unbridden understanding of that. I went to the SIMC 19. To keep up to date, I met new people and we learned lots about the marine environment and plastic pollution in general. And then I went to an Ocean Heroes boot camp in Vancouver, where again I did basically the same thing, met up with different, loads of different people <coughs> and stuff like that. So, marine plastic pollution impacts, well, I think we all know this sort of stuff, but scientists estimate that 90% of seabirds have plastic in their stomach and one million seabirds die every year from ingestion or entanglement in plastic litter. Now, being me, I'm going to now show you some depressing images. <laughs> there we go. Just some stuff we found. And then over 100,000 marine animals die every year from plastic litter. Now, this is the plastic whale that washed up in Norway. I don't know if you've heard of that. It had 33 kilos of plastic bags in its stomach. And we basically had the exact same event the exact same species happen on the sky, and that is the content it had on the stomach. So really, what we are doing to our environment, we are waging a war on wildlife, as Chris Packard says. So plastic pollution is everywhere in our oceans. It, it's, it's in the Mariana Trench, the last frontier on this planet. There you go. So this all this stuff led up to my first campaign that I did with a community that wasn't in school. Now this was the Gerlock sewage campaign. So basically they wanted to degrade the sewage systems around where we go snorkeling to literally pump raw sewage in the sea um, from February to like, I, I don't know, December. Basically not in the summer because tourists were around there. But we went in the middle of February, we went in the ocean, it proved that it was used all year round. And it was thankfully a success. I mean, we got involved with MSPs, we did loads of stuff, lobbying, campaigning, and thankfully we got a positive result from that. The No Cow Dredge campaign, that was another community of thing. Basically, this company wanted to dredge kelp, and in, they said it would lightly pluck it well, there, there it is, lightly plucking it. I, I mean, it just look, looks like it's going to destroy the ocean floor to me. So basically, we'd rip everything out, and that would catch crabs, lobsters, all this unwanted stuff. And during the mechanism of the hook, it, it, more than not, they would probably be killed by it. So, as well as destroying ecosystems for otters, sharks, multiples of different species, as well as Marine rainforest produces 70% of our oxygen and absorbs 50% of our carbon dioxide. Remove that and we basically lost the war against climate change. Now this is the big campaign I did. Um, probably the one I'm most renowned for, to do with Bear Grylls. And I could go on for years about it, but I'm not allowed to do that. So I'll try and explain it as quickly as I can. So Bear Grylls basically, in his new adventure park, has a shark tank. 
many places in Sharp Ranks, I'm not going to not say that, but negative Sharp Promotion, uh, unsuitable conditions, so for negative impact, basically, um, there was, they basically were saying that it was dangerous and deadly, seriously, you're more likely to die eating biscuits, so I mean, as well as unsuitable conditions, they had 13 sharks in an area of 200 square meters, where one black tip shark's home range is 2,600 square meters, as well as fish, rays, and coral inserts. Uh, the shark trust got involved uh, with financial agreement. So basically, they were making money off of it, and it was like a green tick to say it was good for the park, so they went ahead with it. So of course I went and had a rant, being me. So uh, with um, Paul Cox, the organiser of the Shark Trust, I really could not agree with anything he said, majority. Some stuff I agreed with, but yeah. I mean, I was refused entry to the park, so I, um, they said I could go in, check the facilities, uh, and then I realised, why should I go alone? I'm going to invite some people along. So I, I made a list of people, and they got very scared. So basically, they refused my entry, which was amazing. So I lost, at the time, I was an ambassador for Sharks and Kids, and I lost my ambassador role with it because of the fact that they said I wasn't allowed to campaign because of one social media post. But with the Keltridge, I put exactly the same start as Scotland's young junior shark ambassador, I believe, and they'd said nothing about it then. So why wouldn't they have mentioned it then? <laughs> would have been more helpful. So the very good <coughs> continued, I met Chris Packham in Edinburgh at his big picture lecture and I had a 20 minute chat about sharks and the Bear Girls campaign. He invited me to London to speak at the People's Walk for Wildlife to raise awareness about shark campaigning and tweeted messages of support to his followers to help the online petition and added several thousand names to that petition. So then it got, um, I decided I'm going to keep heading down the shark route. So shark finning, I, it's horrendous. 19 restaurants in the UK still serve it. I think at least 13 of them are in London. So you can legally bring 17.5 kilograms of shark fins into the UK, but you can't bring sausages and cheese. <laughs> so, just, so basically they're just going to pass it under the table, sell it for lots of money, go back to China, get more, do, 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 do. So I wrote to all these UK restaurants, and thankfully, one stopped, but there is still another 19 to go. So, about the same time I started the school strike for climate, we, we believe I was the first um, person, with, along with my sister, from the UK to start climate striking. So, we started striking the 14th of December, 38 weeks now, every Friday in Ullabo or elsewhere. I travelled to the EU Parliament on Friday for the future, to speak to the MEPs there about and listen to their debate on climate change, which was very depressing, because they're not actually doing anything. So I was invited to Hollywood to speak to the Environmental Climate Change and Land Reform Committee. Uh, same sort of story there. A bit better, but same story. I met and interviewed Christiana Figueres from the UN Climate. So um, she's basically the one that made the Paris Agreement a thing. So thank you to her. And I just returned from a five-day Fridays for Future conference in Switzerland with 428 activists from 38 countries. We spoke about 49 different languages, including Greta. So numerous TV and radio interviews, newspaper articles, the big issue, and using social media to raise awareness about um, the campaign and climate change. So community and group campaign, well, the good bits. Bigger groups, louder voice, more impact, more likely to be listened to, can offer each other support. Lots of individuals have lots of different skills to offer, which can boost a campaign. Shared workload, delegate tasks, each group can raise awareness in different places, help keep each other motivating. Campaigning is hard work and takes up a lot of time. Important in groups to establish common goals and be clear on how going to achieve them. Young people can join in, good way to gain confidence and learn how to campaign. The bad bits. More meetings, discussions, to decide strategies and take decisions. Lots of different personalities can bring disagreement on campaign goals, direction, 
activists tend to have big egos. <laughs> can cause problems when we work together. We just like the bigger picture. Remember, eco, not ego. <laughs> and need good communication and honest discussion. Individual actions and campaigns. Well, they can campaign on very personal issues, which is quite important to me because most of my stuff is. Yeah. Can we can gain confidence, skills, and learn a lot about how people and how things work. Social media can be very useful to give your voice and spread individual message widely. Just don't make it personal. You get a lot. You get to meet lots of like-minded people. If you campaign, you have to accept that some people may disagree with you, which can lead into things happening on social media. And yeah, if you're not getting flack, you're not doing it right, as Chris Packham says. And positive results slash comments far outweigh any negativity. Now, the bad bits. Not all campaigns will be successful, but you shouldn't stop you trying. The media like to sensor sensationalise me rather than report the facts to do the very real thing. I sent an entire email saying, look, I don't, as a chief scout, I don't agree with what you're doing. I think it's really bad for you uh, to lead this again. And, and I put at the very end, very Mr. Girls, you suck. And of course, being the media, that's all they ever pick up. They just picked up the you suck part. So that's all I know now. So negative comments and personal attacks on social media, if you do campaigning stuff online, this is most likely to happen. You need to develop a thick skin if you want to have a career there in nature conservation. It's very difficult to affect change, especially with politicians who don't really care. Uh, people don't always do what they say, again politicians, and it's easy to ignore a lone voice. Is this the speech bit now, Dad? Or? I remember. No. no, the picture. So, what's your favourite animal? You can't save your favourite animals without also concerning the environment. So, for example, threats for sharks, plastic pollution, shark finning, and climate change. You need to campaign on all these, but ultimately have to stop climate change, the big picture, the sharks, and everything else. Well, the future. I'm going to keep campaigning for sharks and the marine environment. We will continue climate strikes until leaders take action, at least until December 2020. In most schools, not enough being taught about natural history and climate change, so the majority of kids don't understand why what, why what we are doing is important. A recent stu study found that kids were unable to identify even very common animals, such as kingfishers, foxes and badgers. So we definitely need to get more nature into the whole school curriculum. You only protect what you love, but you only love what you know. I'm involved in a big education project, hopefully launching this month, which will help teach kids in schools about these <coughs> critical issues affecting our generation. I've just moved up to secondary school and I've already persuaded one of my teachers to enroll on the new, on the new UN climate change teacher course so they can teach it in the school. I've managed to convince one in the primary school to do the same. I'm planning to write to behind the council to ask them to have a climate change teacher in all their schools. As you can see, I love the oceans and all creatures that live there. I will fight to protect them and help teach my generation how important a healthy ocean is. And I would encourage everyone here to help me and kids like me do that. <coughs> the solutions to all these problems already exist. We simply have to be prepared to make the right choices as individuals and also campaign hard to persuade our leaders to make the big system change required. Thank you to Avon for inviting me here to speak, and thank you all for listening. Does anybody have any questions? I'm happy to talk about sharks later with anybody who could bother to be listened. <laughs> thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Finley. If there is any questions, then everyone far away. If they haven't, well, we don't really need to put our hands up, you can just come out. I was just wondering if it, how you felt when you lost your ambassador role at Sharpless, and if that was hard, or... Well, well it's, it's the same as losing any job. It's depressing and it's difficult to deal with. At the time, it wanted to make me give up campaigning. But, I mean, after all the support I was getting online, from big names like Chris Packham, as well as from family members and friends. It, I mean, of course you don't feel bad about it, but they really help you get out of that situation. I know you've got a new 
And now I've got a new role with the Sea Shepherd. I was really shocked to hear that there are restaurants in London, up to 20, that are actually le legally serving shark food. Illegally. Illegally serving shark food. So, and it's How not just, find out? so there's one in Birmingham, there's like two in Manchester, one in Liverpool, and two somewhere else. Mostly in London, aren't they? Two somewhere yes. else, and then, yeah, majority in London. Mostly in Chinatown, right? So it's like not on the menu. Um, it's yeah. Not the menu, it's, but it's on the fake games. Yeah. So basically, if you go to a ship or if you go to a that's well, if you go to a chip shop, don't order rock husk, rock salmon, as that is actually shark. Wow. Um, so when you got a response from the one restaurant that said they were going to take it off, that's amazing to even put it out. I think they still got a fine though because it was illegal to serve it in the first place. Right. So yeah. mm -hmm. Which is one of the reasons they don't want to talk because they don't want the fine. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a very lucrative trade because it's a very expensive product basically so they can charge a huge sum of money and it, it's 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 one of those Chinese cultural things it's considered to be a very yeah. important thing for them to, to eat so Finley joined in a campaign with bite back wasn't it Finn that was, yeah. that, was that campaign was joined with um, sorry I've got loads of questions oh, yeah. if, if you don't mind what, with the Bear Grylls campaign on the attack you had in his park. What is the result? What's currently happening there at the moment? Is he still got... Yes, and they basically completely blanked us. Right. I still keep sending them messages, being annoying, and they just completely blank us now. And what's happening in the future with that? Then you could talk about that. Well, something else he might at. be going to his headquarters to go have a rant, possibly, but we don't know yet. Yeah, and what else about the actual company itself? What are they planning? So they're actually planning on rolling it out worldwide, and unless we keep messaging them, they'll probably have more shark tanks. Really? Yeah. They're going to China, because that stuff's really popular there. Yeah. America. In fact, the whole park is abuse of animals. You can eat scorpions! <laughs> <laughs> and what was really interesting about that is not only are you campaigning against the fact that um, they've got the sharks in those conditions, like potentially poor conditions, <coughs> yep. but the fact that they're, you mentioned they were, the way they were sort of talking about sharks was... Yep, and they, were, they were negatively promoting it, so saying sharks are dangerous, but as I say, you're more likely to die eating biscuits. Yeah, I think that's so if you want a point. dangerous thing, why don't you just have an all-you-can-eat biscuit buffet? <laughs> <laughs> or bees, or lightning, or whatever. Selfies. Or selfies. Yeah. <laughs> that's such an important point. I think the issue with the sharks in aquariums is that sharks don't really do well in aquariums, do they? Just, just, just historically, they don't. They're just not suited to being in an aquarium situation. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Shark Man. Just to stick it out there, great white sharks are actually suicidal if they're put in a tank. They will literally starve themselves to death. And it's horrendous. The one in Australia that they have, they had to tube feed it before it got used to the tank. So, if that doesn't explain it, I've got many stories for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, hammerhead sharks cannot live in tanks. They will literally cause themselves brain damage. Uh, one <coughs> active shark got so fed up of its tank, 
you're talking about there, there was a swimming pool there and a glass sheet in between, so it looked like you were swimming with the sharks. There was a slide into the pool, a shark gave, gave up on life, jumped onto the slide, went into the pool and died because of the glory. So if that doesn't sum up why like, sharks shouldn't be tanks, I don't know what else. I mean, I've got another story for you now. Um, in, in China, there was a tank and it was so small that um, these two raggedy sharks kept bumping into each other. And the female kept getting really annoyed. It's like if I poke you constantly, it's really annoying. So the female did the only really reason she ate him. So, I mean, that doesn't sum up. I don't know what will.